Okay, today I'm going to be talking about Napoleon Bonaparte. So let's start with Napoleon's early career. His early military career, he uh, led Italian. He was in Italian campaigns uh, in 1796 to 19, uh, 1797. He conquered most of northern Italy for France, and he had developed a taste for governing. In northern Italy, he moved to suppress religious orders and serfdom and limit age-old noble privilege. The Egyptian Campaign In 1798, he was defeated by a British navy under Admiral Horatio Nelson, who destroyed the French fleet at the Battle of the Nile. Abandoning his troops in Egypt, Napoleon returned to France and received a hero's welcome. The Rosetta Stone Now the Rosetta Stone, as we all know, is, is what uh, Jean France Champillion used, used to translate e um, Egyptian hieroglyphics, uh, hieroglyphics, and it is because of France's campaign in in the, uh, in, uh, in Egypt. So this is Europe in the 1800s. You have the French Republic with huge territorial uh, land in uh, in Italy. You have the Ottoman Empire, the Austrian Empire, the Prussian Holy Roman Empire. Great Britain, Spain, and Portugal, and these are the and Russia, of course, and these are the big, very big, uh, major superpowers at the time. Uh, with the government in disarray, Napoleon launched a successful coup d'état on November 9, 1799. He proclaimed himself first consular, a title used by Julius Caesar himself, and did away with the elected assembly. He appointed a senate instead. In 1802, in 1802, he made himself sole consul, consul for life. Two years later, he proclaimed himself emperor through the plebiscito. The plebiscito is uh, is uh, a plebiscite. Sorry, is uh, is like a referendum where you ask the people, "Would you like me as emperor, or would you not?" And the people did uh, choose him as emperor, as emperor through the plebiscite. The Council of State. He proposed the laws. He served as the cabinet and the highest court. Uh, that is the Council of State. It served as the cabinet and the highest court, and it proposed the law. The tribunate debated the laws, but did not vote on them. The, the legislator voted on the laws, but th did not discuss or debate them. And the Senate had the right to review and veto legis legislation. As we all know, Napoleon is the one who got the Senate. Napoleon established the Bank de France, which means Bank of France in uh, French in the 1800s. Uh, Napoleon wanted to heal the divisions within the Catholic Church that had developed after the confiscation of the church's property and the civil constitution of, of the clergy. But Napoleon's clear intent was to use the clergy to, uh, uh, to, uh, to propaganda to prop up his regime and he used the church to support him. So, Catholicism was declared the religion of the majority of Frenchmen. The papal acceptance of church lands lost during the revolution, bishops subservient to the regime. Eventually, Pope Pius the the Seventh renounced the Concordant, and Napoleon had him brought uh, brought to France and placed under house arrest. So. Established in, by, uh, by Napoleon in 1801 as an educational reform, it's the Lycée system of education. Lycées initially enrolled the nation's most talented students. They had to pay tuition, although there was some financial help available for poorer students. Lycées trained the nation's future bureaucrats. And we could see here that uh, Napoleon is creating a generation that will lead France after he is gone. Legion of Honor, the Palace of the Legion of Honor in Paris. Uh, what is Napoleon's Code of uh, 1804? It divides civil law into personal status, property, and the acqu uh, and acquisition of property. Its purpose was to reform the French legal code to reflect the, pr uh, the principles of the French Revolution. The and create one law code for all of France instead of having several laws for each area in France. Now, the influence of the Napoleonic Code. 
Um, wherever it was implemented in the conquered territories, the code, Napo uh, the, Napo the Napoleon Code, swept away feudal property relations. Now, where was it uh, implemented? Well, we knew that France was in control of Louisiana, and that's why it's called the Louisiana Pur Purchase, where uh, the United States bought some land from the French, which is Louisiana nowadays. And so it was implemented in Louisiana in 1825, in Quebec, in Ca which is in Canada, in, ha in Haiti, Argentina, Bolivia, Paraguay, Uruguay, all these uh, uh, countries that, uh, that impl and implemented the Napoleonic Code. So we can see that he has a sphere of influence. So this is then a, 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 a Louisiana purchase in 1805. So you had the, uh, you had uh, on the right we could see that all the state, the U.S. states, and you had uh, now Michigan, Illinois, and uh, Wisconsin is the Indiana Territory. Now the United States bought the Louisiana. It's called the Louisiana Purchase of 1803, where they bought this entire land from the French. For fifteen million dollars, so Emperor Napoleon the first, the Empress Josephine, this is his wife, jo uh, Josephine's bedroom, as you can see, very lavish. Uh, the cons, uh, the consecration of the Emperor Napoleon and the Empress Josephine, by, uh, in eighteen o six. As you can see, there is Napoleon Bonaparte. Napoleon's throne. Napoleon's vet chamber and the imperial image so he was everywhere the empire style empire style and uh, this is the new neoclassic architectural uh, architecture uh, this is Napoleon's tomb now Napoleon's Europe let's get to the important stuff so this is Napoleon's Europe so this is France in 1789 which is the yellow part now, the, anything green on the map is what Napoleon uh, added to his empire in, eight, to, in 1810. Uh, uh, this is dependent states of Napoleon, or which are the red. And you had allies of Napoleon, which, is, which are the Austrian Empire, Denmark, and Prussia at the time. So Napoleon's major military campaigns. In 1805, France uh, fought Britain in the sea. Uh, we all know that uh, the French Navy lost, and we all know that the English Navy is famous. Um, that the English are famous for their navies because they are an island, and therefore their navy it was the strongest uh, part of the army. Uh, Napoleon's major military campaigns. So, uh, France uh, fought, uh, and Britain, Austria, and Russia. They all fought France and Danube and Italy. Uh, this is the third coalition. So you had. Uh, Ulem, France defeated uh, Austria and Austrialites. France defeat uh, France defeated Austria and Russia, and uh, Napoleon got crowned King of Italy on March May 6, 1805. Crossing the Alps in 1805. This is Napoleon crossing the Alps. You have uh, Napoleon's major military campaigns continued. We uh, talk about French, uh, the Confederation of the Rhine. They fight Russia in 1806, Prussia, uh, the French troops in Berlin, uh, Ber uh, and you had the Fourth Coalition created. We're talking about all these military advance advancements that Napoleon was able to create. So what was his goal? To isolate Britain, and, and what is the co uh, continental system? So... Napoleon created this thing called the Continental System, and its goal was to isolate Britain and promote Napoleon's mastery over Europe. And and he wanted countries to stop importing thing, uh, exporting things to Britain, so Britain literally suffocates. So the Berlin Decrees of 1806, British ships were not allowed in European ports. Order and Council of 1806, Britain proclaimed any ship stopping in Britain would be seized when it entered the continent. Milan Decree of 1807 Napoleon proclaimed any ship stopping in Britain would be seized when it entered the continent, which is uh, uh, Europe. These edicts eventually led to the United States de declaring war on Britain, and this is the War of 1812. 
So this is a con uh, uh, con uh, con um, con continental system. You had the UK and uh, areas uh, bared from importing goods uh, from Britain. You had all of Europe. Uh, yeah, st who st stopped importing goods from uh, Europe, and it is anything in the red circle. So, Napoleon's major military campaigns in 1806, France uh, attacked uh, Poland, which was controlled by Russia, and uh, the France defeated the Russian troops, and France occupied Kongsberg capital of East Prussia so this is Josephine's divorce statement with the permission of our August and dear husband I must declare that having no hope of bearing children would fulfill the needs of his policies and the interests of France I am pleased to offer him the greatest proof of attachment and devotion ever offered on this earth far from ever finding cause for the complaint I can to the contrary uh, only congratulate myself on the devotion and tenderness of my beloved wife. She has uh, adorned 13 years of my life. The memory will always remain engraved on my heart. So Mary Louise of Austria, he married uh, Napoleon on March 12, 1810 in Vienna. Uh, they got a son. And, a, uh, and then let's continue. So there's the peninsular campaigns where France fought uh, Spain and Portugal because they did not want to comply with the continent, uh, continental system. Since Portugal did not combine, uh, comply with the continental system, France wanted Spain's support to invade Portugal. Spain refused, so Napoleon invaded Spain as well. And here we can see the arrows uh, where France uh, invaded Spain. So the uh, Napoleon tricked the Spanish king and prince to come to France where he imprisoned them. He proclaimed his brother Joseph to be the new king of Spain. He stationed over 100,000 French troops in Madrid. On March 2, 1808, uh, the Spanish rose up in rebellion. French troops fired on the crowd in Madrid the next day. So this is the 3rd of May. So you can see French troops firing. Napoleon uh, now poured uh, 500,000 troops into Spain over the next few years, but the French general still had trouble subduing the French popu uh, Spanish population. The British viewed the uprising as an opportunity to weaken Napoleon. They moved an army into Portugal to protect their, that country and to aid Spanish guerrillas. After five long years of savage fighting, French troops were finally pushed back across the uh, Pyrenees mountain, mountains of Spain. And here we could see that, you know, it's no hope to stay in Spain. Uh, Napoleon's Empire in 1810. We can see the French Empire is in green. Countries controlled by Napoleon, uh, which are in uh, light, zero green. Uh, you have uh, countries allied with Napoleon. You have Norway, uh, Kingdom of Norway and Denmark. You have Russia, Prussia, Austrian Empire, etc. And you also have the uh, and countries at war with Napoleon, of course, uh, Britain. Uh, Jeremy, uh, so Napoleon put all these uh, relatives into power around uh, Europe, and so he could have complete control over Europe. The big blunder, the retreatment from Spain came on the heels of Napoleon's disastrous Russian campaign. Uh, in July 18, uh, Napoleon led uh, his grand army of six, uh, 614,000 men eastward uh, across Central Europe and into Russia. Russia avoided a direct uh, confrontation with Napoleon. They retreated to Moscow, drawing the French into the interior of Russia, hoping that its size and weather would act as support for the Russian cause. The Russian nobles abandoned their estates and burned their crops to the ground, leaving the French troops to operate from them. And therefore, the Russia, the the French died, and 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 many lives were lost because uh, when Napoleon reached Russia, he could not find any food, and the Russian had set fire to the city, and that is how the Russian army defeated the French at Borodino, and a hundred thousand troops retreat, and forty thousand survive. Thank you for watching this video. This video was talking about how uh, your, uh, Napoleon came to an end in Russia. Thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Darush and bye bye.